Hello and welcome for you to our um, lesson on the remainder theorem. Um, the last lesson was called the remainder theorem part one, but all we ended up doing was learning how to divide by long division and synthetic division. Um, today we're going to actually learn the remainder theorem and by the end of today you should be able to say I know what the remainder theorem is and I can apply it in appropriate situations. So we're going to start with the first part of this I know what the remainder theorem is uh, by going through this example in example one it says divide the polynomial p at x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4 by x minus 2. Now we're going to use synthetic division because that's easier. So synthetic division starts by doing this and then figuring out what makes this a 0. Well if I stick a 2 in for x then I get 2 minus 2 is 0. So 2 makes the divisor 0. Now I have to put in the coefficients of the terms so I get 1 negative 2. Uh, the x term is missing so I have to fill in 0 and then negative 4. And now we have to put in a 0 here because that's what synthetic division tells us to do and we're going to add down. 2 times 1 is 2 and we're going to add down. 2 times 0 is 0 we're going to add down. And 2 times 0 is 0 and when we add down we get negative 4. So what this tells us if we write our division statement is that if I take um, the divisor which is x minus 2 and I multiply it by in this case x squared and then I've got no x's and no constant terms but I get a remainder 4 um, that if I expanded this out I would get my original polynomial and this one's easy enough we can actually think about that. If I expand this out I get x times x squared here is x cubed and negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared so I get the x cubed minus 2x squared and then I get the minus 4 tacked on the end for the remainder. Now here's what I want you to notice. I want you to notice that if I evaluate p at 2 now where did this 2 come from? right here. The thing that makes it 0. If I evaluate p at 2, uh, I get, I'm going to do it from here, 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared minus 4. I get 8 minus 2 squared is 4 and then times 2 is 8 minus 4. 8 minus 8 is 0 and then minus 4. So here's the remainder theorem. L notice this, our remainder was negative 4 and when I evaluated it at 2 I get negative 4. So what that means is that if I'm only concerned with the remainder, the remainder is my only uh, issue, all I have to do is figure out what makes the divisor 0 and plug it in. So I'm going to pull these couple of things out. Um, this is what I said here. What I want you to notice is that if I evaluate p at 2, uh, remember 2 is the value that makes the bracket 0. This is what I get. And um, the final answer is the same as the remainder when we divided coincidence? Well, generally, if I'm bothering to tell you about it, it's not a coincidence. Okay, And it really isn't. That's the remainder theorem. So the remainder theorem actually states if p at x is divided by x minus b, so there's our divisor, and the remainder is constant, then the remainder will be p at b. And remember, p at b is what's making this bracket 0, because if I sub a b in there, I get b minus b. Okay? Now we're going to prove this and the first thing that I want you to remember as part of this proof uh, is what all of these things stand for because I'm going to write a division statement with them. Uh, proof p at x is a polynomial, x minus b is the divisor, q at x is the quotient or the answer, uh, r is the remainder. So for a division statement, then the division statement is p 
at x equals x minus b times my answer, which is q at x, and plus the remainder. Now we're going to evaluate um, p at b. So if I evaluate p at b, I go p at b equals, and we're going to stick in that b, and then we have q at x plus, oops, that should have been r, plus remainder. Now, what is b minus b? Well, b minus b is 0, and that's going to multiply by q at x, and then we have plus the remainder. But 0 times anything uh, it just goes away. So all we're left with is plus the remainder, which I keep putting a p instead of an r, is just the remainder. So there is the proof of the remainder theorem. Okay, now the general remainder theorem, um, the general remainder theorem um, is from this. If I have ax minus b, where I have a letter out in front of the x, um, and the remainder is constant, then the remainder will p, be p at b over a. Um, again, b over a is what makes this bracket zero. If I sub in b over a, I get a times b over a minus b, and then um, a cancels into a, and b minus b is zero. So again, it's what makes the bracket zero for that. So, now these ones are a whole lot simpler than actually dividing. Example two, it says find the remainder for each divisor. And all it says is find the remainder. It doesn't say find anything else. So we're free to use the remainder theorem. So if I want to use the remainder theorem here, I have to figure out what makes this zero, which is going to be negative four. So I want to evaluate p at negative four. And in this case, p at negative four is going to be two times negative four squared minus 3 times negative 4 plus 7. Negative 4 squared, remember order of operations, negative 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. And then negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And then plus 7. So 32 plus 12 is 44 plus 7 is 51. And so the remainder, therefore, r equals 51. Now the next one, what makes this zero? Well, this one is going to be um, 1 over 2, uh, because if I take half of 2, it's, I get 1, subtract 1 is 0. Uh, so now I have to evaluate p at 1 half. Now you guys have calculators that can handle halves if you have a problem here, uh, but p at a half is going to be 4 times one half cubed minus two times a half squared plus six times a half minus one. Well, one half cubed is an eighth and four times an eighth is four eighths or one half, but I'm not going to skip too many steps at once. Um, two, or one half squared is a quarter times two is two quarters which is also a half, um, plus 6 times a half is 3 minus 1. So what we have here is a half minus a half, which means that a half minus a half is gone, and I have plus 3 minus 1 on the end, which means that my remainder is 2. So therefore, the remainder is 2. And that's all there is to it. It's just evaluating polynomials, figuring out um, what the value of the polynomial is. Um, when the polynomial x cubed minus 3x squared plus kx minus 7 is divided by negative 4, the remainder is 29. What is the value of k? So we're going to always start by filling in what we know. And what we know is that um, w the value that makes the divisor 0 is 4. So we know that p at 4 is going to equal 29 because that's just the remainder theorem. If I take what makes this 0 and I sub it into the polynomial, I'm going to get 29. So let's sub that into the polynomial. 
I'm going to get 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared plus k times 4 minus 7 equals 29. Now 4 cubed, 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64, minus 3 times 4 cubed Um, 4 squared, that was 3 times 4 squared, not 4 cubed. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48, uh, plus 4k minus 7 equals 29. Now, all we have to do here now is collect our like terms and solve. Ta-da! So there's our answer, k equals 5. So that is our, that's what we were asked to find, so we can say therefore k equals 5. Uh, for what value of b will the polynomial here have the same remainder when divided by both of these two divisors? So um, we know that we want to have the same remainder, so if I plug in what makes this value 0, which will be 2, and what makes this value 0, which is negative 1, I should, they should be equal. And since we're missing the b, we're going to have to do a little bit of figuring here. If the remainders are the same, we know that p at 2 and p at negative 1 have to be equal. So we're going to sub them in and set them equal. So there's what we get when we sub the values in. And now we have to evaluate them. So 2 cubed is 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 2 cubed is 4, so we got plus 4b, and that's a b, not a 6. Sometimes our b's look like 6's. Minus 10 plus 2. And on the other side, we have negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 2 is positive 1. Negative 1 squared is simply 1, so we got plus b, and then plus 6. Now this is a 6, uh, plus 2. Now we have to collect like terms and solve. So here we've collected up like terms and now we want to solve. Now I'm going to solve by adding 24 to both sides. I won't normally do this, but I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to add 24 to both sides and then I want to get my b's on this side. So I'm going to subtract b on both sides and we're going to get here 3b equals, uh, and that is going to be 34. And then 34 divided by b, uh, divided by 3 is going to give me b equals 34 over 3. Now by the looks of it I've made a mistake somewhere because the remainder should have come out as a whole number. Um, or this should have come out as a whole number, so I need to backtrack, and I think I found my mistake. Did you guys spot it? Uh, it's a classic right here uh, where I multiplied. Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. Where I multiplied a 5 and a 1 and got a 6 instead of a 5. So this should have been a 5. That should have been a 9, making this a 33. And when I divide 33 by 3, I get my b to be 11, and that's more what I wanted there. b equals 11. Uh, and that concludes this video.